317 and whatever you do in word or deed do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him how can you serve the Lord in your day today we give thanks to God for those who serve our country we're thankful for the freedom we have because of their service to our country their service is a wonderful example 
of how we can live out our faith in word and deed. Please pray with us. Our hands we fold, our heads we bow, our eyes we close. We're praying now. Dear Jesus, thank you for our country. Thank you for our veterans protecting us. <coughs> thank you for helping our country. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for serving us. Thank you for showing us every day. You are a great army that protects. Thank you for our bravery. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for guarding us. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your kindness. We think you are great. God bless our soldiers. We pray God keeps you safe. We hope you get a break. Amen. Thank you, veterans, for serving for our freedom. Jesus gives us our perfect freedom through his death on the cross. Let's hear how that message is shared with our veterans. A chaplain is a pastor for those who serve in the military. They help to bring God's word to those who are serving the country. Hello there. This video goes out to the students of Miss Rebecca Schaefer, who is a teacher at St. Paul Lutheran School in Boca Raton, Florida. My name is Chaplain Aaron Bell, and I would like to take a moment to tell uh, the students there about what it's like to be a Navy chaplain. One question you might have is, how does one become a chaplain for the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod? And first of all, you need to be a pastor for the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, which means four years of college and then another four years at either Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana, or Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, Missouri. Both great schools. I enjoyed my time at Concordia Seminary St. Louis very much. Graduated there in 2010 and after some additional schooling, became an associate pastor at the magnificent congregation of Holy Cross Lutheran Church in St. Cloud, Minnesota. I was there for about three years and after that, I felt the Lord calling me to ministry in the armed forces. And so from there, I went and talked to Chaplain Erkinen, who was the directory of the ministry to armed forces at the time. And also I talked to the local Navy recruiter and filled out a bunch of forms, and talked to a bunch of people, had several interviews, and it was actually a pretty smooth process. About six months after I started that process, I was shipping off to serve as a chaplain in the United States Navy. And my first duty station was Gulfport, Mississippi, where I served with the Navy Mobile Construction Battalion. And it was a great time, it was pretty cool. What does a military chaplain do? Well, we do a lot of the same things that the LCMS pastors do. Uh, we lead Bible studies, we preach sermons, we baptize, we give Holy Communion. We give spiritual counseling and comfort to people who will, will visit the sick and the injured. Uh, the difference is where we do these things. 
you have uh, LCMS pastors that will preach sermons at your local congregation. And that is great because that means this Sunday when you go to church, you get to have a sermon preached. But what if you're not at your home? What if you're at another place far away on the other side of the world serving the military? Well, that's where military chaplains come in. LCMS chaplains provide pastoral ministry in places where non-military personnel simply don't have access. For example, there are 103 active and reservist LCMS chaplains as we speak. This last summer, nine of them were deployed around the world, providing ministry in remote bases in Europe, or maybe preaching sermons on gigantic steel ships in the middle of the ocean with no land in sight, or maybe even baptizing military personnel in the middle of a desert. Now, you might be wondering, how do you baptize someone in the middle of a desert? I mean, where do you find the water? Well, according to Air Force Chaplain Travis Ferguson, you find the water wherever you want. Here's a couple photos of him doing a baptism of an airman in the bucket of a front end loader. So I bet you didn't know that you could baptize someone on a front end loader, but apparently you can. Well, that's the kind of thing that LCMS chaplains do. Wherever military personnel are around the world, there you will find LCMS chaplains providing word and sacrament ministry for them. If you have any family in the military or maybe they served in the past, whether it's siblings or parents, grandparents, aunts or uncles, you know that sometimes it can be a hard life. Sometimes they go to difficult, dangerous places. Sometimes their lives are in danger. And it's just really important for them to know that even if they're not sure how the day is going to end, that they have an LCMS chaplain there preaching the good news to them, knowing that their salvation in Jesus is absolutely certain because he has died and risen for all of our sins and for all of our salvation. So God bless all of you. I hope you enjoyed this video. I wish you all a blessed Veterans Day and we'll see you later. Bye now.
which branch of the service were you in or are you in? Hi, my name is Clyde Barberi. I uh, joined the U.S. Navy right directly out of high school in 1960. Which branch of the service are or were you in? Senior Airman Sean Rose, and I serve the United States Air Force. Good morning. I am retired Mass Chief Petty Officer, United States Navy, James Mercero. Landon's Uncle Jamie. How many years did you serve? Hi, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Kristen Duncan. I'm a veteran of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. I served four years active duty uh, and uh, three years inactive or reserve duty. Hi, St. Paul. My name is Greg Combs. My son, Luke, is in seventh grade. I served in the Marine Corps for six years. How many years did you serve? I did 30 years in the Navy, all in the submarine force. Yep, submarine force, rode submarines for 30 years. Hi, I'm Major Scott Stoppelbein. I've been serving in the Army for 12 years. I signed a six-year contract, and I'm currently three years and change into that contract. Why did you pick that branch of service? I selected to be in the Air Force because I felt the jobs that best fit what I wanted to do included that, and you could travel a lot. Why did you select that branch of service? I picked the Marines because my dad was in the Marines in World War II. If you're, you are currently serving, what is your job? I'm currently serving as the Battalion Executive Officer for the 1st Battalion, 19th Infantry Regiment here at Fort Benning, Georgia. If you are currently serving, what is your job? Currently my job is a avionics maintainer, so I work on any electronic part on the F-35. That includes radar, electronic warfare, communication, navigation, identification system, and any cryptologic elements of the aircraft. What was the longest you were away from home? I did, uh, I have 22 years of sea time. Uh, my longest time underway, underwater was 115 days. That's it. Carry on. What was the longest you were away from home? The longest I've been away from my family. I've been away from my family for quite a while, but I still see them a few times a year, so it's no big deal. Did you make any friends that you are still in contact with today? Yes, I do. I have my battle buddies that I was deployed with and that I still keep in contact with. And I've known them for at least 10, 15 years. And when you are in those kind of situations, those people become very close to you. So my battle buddies and I stay close. Did you make any friends that you are still in contact with today? It was a really good time, a lot of fun. Made a lot of really good friends who I'm still in contact with today. I've made a lot of friends since being in the military, going to essentially five different bases now. I still keep in touch with a lot of them. And once you're in a branch of the military, you realize it's a small world. So you keep in touch and everywhere you travel, you have somebody you know. What was your most memorable moment while serving? Most memorable experience in the Army is uh, definitely having the ability to jump out of planes. I've uh, done 38 jumps, and all of them successful, still here. Uh, and it's uh, been by far one of the most exhilarating and fun things to do, and I would recommend it for anyone that gets the chance. Been around the world a couple times. South Africa, North Pole, Panama Canal, Suez Canal, Red Sea. Um, been everywhere, done everything. My, memor my most memorable time would be with Landon and my brothers fishing in Maine. What is your most memorable moment while serving? While I was in, I was able to fly the F-4 Phantom. And uh, we flew that plane. Uh, our main base was Beaufort, South Carolina, but we flew all over the United States. We took our planes and flew them all the way to Japan. And while we were there, we went to the Philippines and Korea. What is or was the hardest part of being in the service? 
Hardest part about being in the service is you'll be told to do things that you may not necessarily want to do when you want to do it. What was the food like when you were serving away from home? My favorite food on board the boat was pizza night. Every Saturday night we had pizza night, sat down and watched movies, and burger, burger day, sliders, sliders and fries was my other one. What was the food like when you were serving away from home? The food is pretty good in the Air Force, depending upon the base. When I was at Shepard Air Force Base in Wichita Falls, Texas, they had the best paninis. So, food is not so bad. What advice would you give to someone who is thinking about joining a branch of the military? I encourage you to really do your research and make sure you know absolutely what job you would like to do and what would make you most happy. Furthermore, talk to a recruiter and don't be afraid to ask the hard questions. That's what they're there for. Ask them as many questions as you want. Get the answers you want. And once you come up with a decision, then it's just go with the flow from there. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to share about your experience? Right out of uh, high school, I went uh, off to radio school and electronics school. And then they sent me to London, England to work in an American embassy. Um, that was a great experience. I rarely had to wear a uniform and I had to live in the local neighborhoods and, and become almost like an English person. Uh, I did get a chance to visit most countries in Western Europe, and, uh, but more or less on my own, uh, my own time and thoroughly enjoyed the experience. So if you're not ready for college right out of high school, the military is a good place to go. Um, I can't believe I got paid to, to fly that plane around. And uh, also I fly for the airlines now and that's a lot of fun also. But uh, if you're interested, you can check out all the services. Thank you for doing this for Veterans Day. Speaking of Afghanistan, uh, I just got to tell a really cool story. A rescue airmen who are a bunch of heroes out there saving lives in Afghanistan just a few months ago. And I'm currently working with movie producers out in Los Angeles, hoping to get it made into a movie. So one day you'll get to watch it. Hello veterans and honored guests. Sixth grade has written an acrostic poem to represent how we feel about veterans and their service. We hope you feel the respect and love we have for you. Thank you for your service. W is for the warrior that you are. E is for every day that you are away from your loved ones. Thank you. L is for the love that you give to your country. O is for others that you encourage and give strength to. V is because we value your commitment and valor. E is because we can never thank you enough for your sacrifice. O is for the opportunity we, we have to thank you. U is for the unforgettable sacrifices you made. R is for the great risks you have taken for us. V is for the victory won for our country. E is for everything you've done for us. T is for how thankful we are for your service and sacrifice. E is the way you excel at protecting us. R is the immense respect we have for you. A is for our great country, America, that you loyally served. N is for the noble sacrifice you have given us. S is the salute we give you.